welcome to 90 Degrees, a channel about elevating your design career. My name is Alberto Orsini, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe as it truly helps out a lot. Today, I'm coming to you in an emoji format. Uh, we are quarantined, and I'm looking a little bit like Lieutenant Dan and with no party around me, so I figured I would totally spare you, but I'm pretty excited about today because we're going to be talking about pneumorphism. And usually when we talk about pneumorphism, we're talking about UI design, we're talking about sketch, we're talking about Figma, etc. Uh, but one of my friends, Angel Acevedo, challenged me to create the same styles in Photoshop. So today I'm going to be walking you through how to achieve that within Photoshop using the tools that they have available. And more so not only creating the styles, but how to continue using the styles beyond when you want to apply it to multiple elements right and uh, you want to share those styles with your team members uh, or with your friends how to go about doing that so let's dive right in so first of all here's what we want to achieve today number one we're gonna create a couple different styles like you can see here this sort of race style we're gonna create an indented style at number two uh, we're gonna look at how to create these as shared styles and number three this is a sort of a bonus and something that I really like doing with my design is adding a little bit of noise or texture to the overall design so that it's less clinical and a little bit more realistic when it has this type of noise applied to it so the first thing that I'm gonna want to do when I open up Photoshop is I'm gonna create a new file at this point I'm using 1080 by 1080 thinking that this is something that maybe I'm gonna be sharing on Instagram you certainly don't have to do that these are just the sizes that I'm using and keep this in reference right now because we're gonna be using some shadows and some lighting effects that will play an important role because it highly depends on the size of the canvas that you're using so if you want to follow along you probably want to stick pretty close to this I'm gonna call this a uh, new morphic pneumorphic let's just leave it at that so I'm doing 1080 by 1080 72 dpi and I'm gonna keep the background white even though we're actually gonna be changing that so the first thing that I want to do here is I'm actually gonna change the background color I'm gonna select a color that is sort of off white I don't want to use plain white because I'm actually gonna use plain white to do the highlights whenever I do those effects of racing or indenting so I'm gonna choose a color I'm gonna use the same one that I was using before just for the reference uh, here but you can choose anything sort of like around this area basically and colorize it in any way that you would want or just stick to the gray all the way to the left so I'm gonna I'm gonna use the hex value here I'm gonna do F0 E FF7 Final Fantasy 7 I'm super excited about that coming out next month so I'm going to do that and when I select that color I'm actually going to paint the background that color. I did it with a short key so I use uh, option delete uh, so that I could paint it with sort of my foreground color over here selected in my palette. Uh, beyond that I'm actually going to create a new shape so whatever shape we want to create I'm going to use the ellipse tool and draw I don't know some sort of circle right and this is this circle I'm gonna do a couple of things to it this is gonna be my main shape where I'm gonna be creating the styles right now you cannot see it so let's resolve that real quick by going into the effects either down here or double clicking on the shape itself this is gonna bring the layer styles and I'm gonna do a couple of things the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a color overlay and I'll explain a little bit about why I'm choosing to do this instead of going about it without doing this knowing that the shape is already the the desired color so again I'm gonna choose that same color that I'm using for the background because I need something that I can bounce against and using that same color is gonna create the effect that we want so I'm gonna do that number one number two I'm gonna go ahead and add a shadow a drop shadow you should probably see it over here but I uh, on purpose I deleted these so I'm gonna select a drop shadow um, the first one I'm gonna change it to normal because we don't need it to be anything else the first one that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create the highlight so I'm gonna change this all the way to white uh, let me try to get this out of the way so that we can start seeing hopefully we can start seeing the effect I'm going to do that at 100% because we want it to be 100% white. This is very subtle uh, out here, so maybe you cannot see it. But I'm going to change it to 100%. 
I want this to be at an angle so I'm gonna go over here to maybe like negative 45 degrees and this is really just dictating where is the light coming from into into this now I have some values here that I've already written down which are 20 10 and then 25 again you don't have to use these exactly however you can play with these values depending on the size of your element the size of your canvas these can uh, vary slightly now before closing out of here we want to create yet another shadow oh one important thing I'm gonna unclick use global light because I'm gonna be repeating uh, some of these and creating different effects. I don't want everything to be following exactly the same light source. So really important. Uh, let's get rid of that. Ooh, that that changed my angle again. So I'm gonna change it to negative 45 degrees again. I'm gonna create on this plus icon to create a new drop shadow. And this drop shadow is gonna be slightly different. This is gonna be an actual shadow rather than a highlight. I'm gonna go ahead and change it to another color. I'm using something in the blue tints. So I'm gonna go with 2A, 254D, 254D. And, and that's gonna give me sort of that purplish color that I want. Obviously, I'm not gonna keep it at the same degree. I'm gonna go opposite of that. So I'm gonna do 135 degree. Obviously, that is way, way too dark from what we need. So we're gonna go down here to about 16%. Uh, which already you can start seeing the effect that we want taking shape and I'm gonna keep the other values exactly the same so I'm gonna click OK and that's gonna be that's gonna be the the first one that I created sort of my raised one if I want to create new shapes beyond this let's say I draw a polygon uh, and I want to use exactly the same layer styles I can simply go to this one right click it and I can where are you at? I can copy the layer style from over here. <laughs> I, I lost it for a little bit and click back on my polygon that I just created. Right click again and then paste the layer style, which is gonna, which is gonna add the same effect. That's pretty good, uh, but I wanna take that a little bit of a step further so that I can easily do that. And not only that, but I can share these styles with some of my coworkers. Let's say that we're working on some files together uh, and they need to have access to the same styles or I wanna share it with some friends. I should be able to do that. So in order to do that, you're gonna go to your effects panel. If you don't see that window or your style, I see effects here, but styles panel, if you don't see it right here, you simply go up to window and down to styles. Uh, and that's gonna bring it up or, or add it to your sidebar. Uh, for the sake of, because I'm gonna be doing multiple styles, I'm gonna create a new folder here and I'm gonna call this new morphism. You can call it whatever you want, but I'm gonna call it that. And inside of new morphism, I'm actually gonna select some of these shapes and I'm gonna click this plus icon and I'm gonna call this raised one, which is the style that I'm that I'm creating. I'm gonna include layer effects. I'm gonna include layer blending options, although I don't think I'm using any blending options. I'm not gonna add it to my current library. So I'm gonna hit okay. And right now, even though I had the folder selected, it didn't really drop it in there. So I'm gonna grab it and drag it into the folder. And you see that indentation, uh, basically, um, that's what, what it just did. So in order to do the opposite, we have the ray style. Instead of drop shadows, we want to do internal shadows. Is that what they're called? Let's go ahead and find out. I'm gonna select this one. I duplicated it by uh, pressing option and clicking and dragging. I'm gonna double click on this again to go into my effects. So the color overlay, I'm gonna keep the same, but rather than using drop shadows, I'm gonna use inner shadows. And you see, I already had another one uh, created here, but let's say that these are gone. You'll do the same thing as I did with the drop shadows where you create the first one and then you click the plus icon to add another one and you repeat the process. So here I'm actually gonna copy what I had in my drop shadows, but I'm gonna invert the light using the angle. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is white at 100%, instead of negative, uh, negative 45, I'm gonna go over to uh, 135, uh, uncheck use global light if it's checked and use exactly the same values that I had before, which are 20, 10, 25, okay? 
and that's already creating obviously you know it's mixing with the with the outside um drop shadow which is creating sort of a funky effect actually i'm, I'm seeing something that i didn't want to do i do want to keep this one at negative 45 because uh if you see on on my raised ones my light source is coming from the top generate casting a shadow on the bottom right and generating a highlight on the top left so i want to i want to create that same effect with my with my indented one uh, i'm gonna add another inner shadow this will be at 135 degrees we're gonna drop it to 16 again we're recreating exactly the same thing that we did before and then uh, for my hex value i'm going to do the what was it to a 25 4d and i'm gonna i'm gonna bring that in there again at 16 and before closing out of this i want to get rid of these shadows so i don't need them anymore because this is indented beautiful so now i have my race style right and i have my indented style and we can we can even combine some of those but before i go any further i want to save this so in order to save it again i go to my styles panel I'm going to click on this plus and I'm going to call this indent one and I have that in there. Now, this is this is where it starts getting really interesting. Let's say that I wanted to do this indentation and I wanted to do another circle inside of this that is smaller and raised to create a sort of kind of like a button effect. I can duplicate this. I'm going to do this by hitting uh, having it selected and hitting command J on my keyboard that basically created a new one. Did it? Um, or am I making yeah uh, it created another one so I'm gonna hold the option as I resize from the corner so that I'm resizing in the in the center I'm gonna press return and with that element selected now that I have my shared styles over here I can click on raised and as you can see it now looks like I have a button in the center of this sort of um, indented area and the effect is 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 pretty cool you know, you could do any number of combinations around this. But once you're happy with everything that you have and you've saved everything here as part of your styles, you can actually right click on this folder and export these uh, selected styles and sort of give it a name, whatever you want to call it. So let's say this is also called Neomorphism or Neomorphic as we have the uh, in our file. Um, once I save that, I can share it with my friends, I can share it with my coworkers. they can double click in and automatically have those styles available to them on their side. Finally, something that I really like doing uh, with a lot of my designs is adding a little bit of noise or texture. Uh, so in order to do that, I'm going to create a new layer on top of everything. And that layer, I'm going to call it, um, I'm not going to call it anything, sorry. I'm going to color it in uh, whatever color I want to use. Let's say I want to use this sort of like hot pink or something like that. Uh, I can certainly do that. I'm going to um, click um, option delete to paint this with, um, with my foreground color over here. Instead of normal, I'm going to change that layer style to probably overlay so that you can already see you know what the, the sort of effect that it's having uh over here it's looking a little bit like pepto bismol i don't know if i want to change this to another color anyway i want to drop the opacity uh, as well so i'll probably do like a 70 percent then i'm gonna go into filter noise add noise and then whatever uh level of noise you're sort of comfortable with I think I'm, I'm comfortable at around 20. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now you can see that my file has noise. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to best describe it, but noise adding a little bit of texture. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Uh, please subscribe. Consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And I'll catch you on the next video.